This is episode number 173. Had a heckler a few years ago on stage. What did I do about it? My advice for you so you don't have to be in the same situation. That's coming up. This is the Red Podcast. How to take your idea and make a name for yourself within your industry and beyond. Spread your message. Attract a following. Rise above the noise. Here's your host, David Hooper. If you're a fan of the podcast and want to get me on the phone one-on-one, there's a way for you to do it, and you can do it free. Your opportunity to talk to me with other influencers, I will help you grow your business. I will help you grow your influence. Go to redpodcast.com. Look in the right-hand column. It's called Red Insiders. We get together every month. Get on the phone with me. We'll talk one-on-one, help you grow your business, help you grow your influence. This is the Red Podcast. What does Red stand for? Reach, expand, and develop your audience. You're trying to grow an audience. You're trying to have more respect from them, more influence with them, and that's what we do. We help you to reach, expand, and develop that audience. If you're a blogger, you're a podcaster, speaker, marketer, entrepreneur. This is the podcast for you. If you've got a message to spread, this is the podcast for you. The focus, it's how to take your idea, make a name for yourself, and make money. I've got a funny story for you. A few years ago, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, speaking in front of about 200 people. It was a music business conference. A lot of musicians in the audience. A lot of music business people in the audience. I'm there on stage. Speaking as I normally do, spotlights in my face. You could see the shadows in the audience. The guy stands up, and suddenly from the crowd, he yells, You don't know what the f you're talking about. I want you to think about that. What would you do in that situation? You're there as an expert, you've got few people in the audience, maybe a few hundred, maybe a few thousand people in the audience, and one guy is disrupting everything. We saw this just a few years ago, 2012, Wayne LaPierre from the NRA had the same issue. Sandy Hook shootings, children were killed, and everybody wanted to know what the National Rifle Association had to say about it. So the NRA and the president of the NRA, Wayne LaPierre, they call a press conference. He gets up there with a prepared speech, which he's reading, and shortly into his presentation, you know what, I'm just going to play this for you so you can hear this. The monsters and the predators of the world know it and exploit it. That must change now. The truth is... Okay, so we've got Wayne LaPierre here. He's going into his prepared presentation. Millions of people are watching him. Everybody wants to know what he has to say. And as he gets into it, somebody stands up. The big pink banner, it says, NRA, killing our kids. NRA, stop killing our children. Cameras on him. It's the NRA and the assault weapons that are killing our children. Not armed... We've got to end the army. We've got to end the violence. They walk him out. Stop keeps killing. Stop Wayne Lapierre, what did he do? Stop keeps on going. Moments later, a second the front row of one of the biggest press conferences of the year. She stands up. She's got a banner. She's in our eyes, blood on her hand. She knows she doesn't have much time. She starts yelling immediately. We take her out immediately. We keep going. Get her out of the hole. Two protesters out of the hole. Everybody's got it on video. They've got it on audio. They're photographing it. And somebody asked, you're not going to say anything? Just kept on going. Right there, Wayne LaPierre lost connection with that audience. He didn't even want to acknowledge it. 
just kept reading. If you've done enough live presentations, you've probably been in a situation where people can't hear you. The microphone goes out. You've had a projector maybe. The projector doesn't work. Your slides are messed up. There's a computer malfunction. Something crashes. You can't just ignore that something's happening. You can't just ignore when somebody in the back of the room, when you're giving a presentation, stands up and says, you don't know what the f*** you're talking about. Rick Roberts, he's a good friend of mine. He was on the podcast before, episode number 109. He's a stand-up comic, does a few hundred dates a year. We did an entire episode about lessons that you can learn as a blogger, as a podcaster, as a presenter from a stand-up comic. Those are the guys that have to be fast on their feet. You've seen the hecklers. You've got to be really fast when you've got somebody trying to take you down like that. That episode, it's at redpodcast.com slash 109 if you want to get the entire thing. Rick's got a great rule that he uses on stage. It's the first rule of improv. They call it the rule of yes. I'm going to call it don't deny. If somebody's going to stand up and disagree with you or if somebody's going to stand up and protest you like they did Wayne LaPierre and the NRA, you can't deny that it's happening. If you deny it, the equivalent of a second person with a banner, which is exactly what happened with Wayne LaPierre, well, that's going to happen to you. If I denied that a guy was in the back of the room yelling at me, telling me I didn't know what I was talking about, if I denied him, he's just going to yell louder. I didn't have that kind of security to escort him out. Nobody was expecting that. So here's my rule when something like this happens to you. You make the audience look good. This is very similar to a conversation that you might be having on your podcast. If you've ever moderated a panel, if you've ever been on a panel, when somebody asks you a question or when you're responding to something, you make the host look good. You make the guy asking the question look good. You make the audience look good. I've done hundreds of radio broadcasts. Occasionally, even though I do my research, even though I'm prepared for every single episode, I'll get my facts wrong. I'll mispronounce something, I'll get a title wrong, I'll get a name wrong, I'll get a fact wrong. You don't want to be that guy who's going to correct the host. I don't know if you've ever seen this happen, but you want to be on the same team as the host. You want to be on the same team as your audience. You could not go out in front of an audience of 200 people, maybe even more, even a dozen people, and win just because you've got a microphone. One of the biggest rules that I've learned from Rick Roberts. Again, that episode is redpodcast.com slash 109. When you're on stage, whether you're a comic or whether you're an influencer, like somebody listening to this podcast is, whether you're a comic, whether you're an author, whether you're giving an interview, you need audience on your side. That's the rule of congruence. This is another improv rule. Imagine if you were a mime, let's say. You open an invisible door on stage. Well, you better shut it because if you don't, even though it's an invisible door, people think something's open and they need to be able to resolve those little things. Just like if you're on stage and you say you're married, you better have a wedding ring on. When you're trying to influence people, make them see your point of view, they're looking for little bitty holes in your presentation. So if you say you're married, you need to have a wedding ring on because that backs up what you just said. So when you say that next thing, it's a little bit bigger. And maybe they can't back it up by looking at you or listening to you. They're going to take your word for it. This is congruence, and this is how it starts. You acknowledge what's happening, and you back up everything that you possibly can. For example, you're talking about success on stage. Better be in a suit. This is why so many multi-level marketing guys fail. If you ever talked with a network marketing person, he's got the bullet points down talking to you all about success and about all the money that you're going to make. But when you see him show up for one of his meetings that he's dragged you to, he's driving a car with three wheels on it. One of the doors is painted with primer. It's a totally different color. No hubcaps. The thing's smoking. Well, that's incongruency. You're not going to believe that guy. Now, if he shows up in a Cadillac, well, you might listen to him a little bit. You must build 
congruence. That congruence, that's going to keep you from running into problems on stage. If Wayne LaPierre had acknowledged that there was an issue with guns, if Wayne LaPierre had acknowledged these people, they wouldn't have gone to the lengths that they did to sneak into his press conference and hijack it. Congruence smooths everything out. So how did my presentation in Atlanta end? I'm up on stage. Guy stands up in the middle of the presentation, tells me I don't know what I'm talking about. That's when time stood still for me. I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do now? It's never happened before. I didn't want to engage him too much, let him throw off the presentation any more than he already had. So I thought, well, what is this guy probably thinking? Well, he's probably frustrated. He wants to know more about the topic that we're talking about. He wants to have success with it. He's probably frustrated that the answers that I'm giving him aren't a match for his worldview right now. So I said, look, you're probably pretty frustrated. I would love to help you with this. I'd love to find out more about what you're going through right now because what I'm going up here, it is very general. If you want to come see me at the side of the stage afterwards, I'll be right here pointed to the right side of the stage. I hope you will come with me. I'd love to hear more about your situation. I'll see if I can help you out. Set him down. Move forward. Again, you want the audience with you, and that's one of the great things when you have the audience with you is that they'll kind of squelch that kind of thing for you. He didn't want to go against the audience. I was trying to acknowledge him not deny them and have the audience against me and the audience turn on his side, but have the audience on my side so they would help me to control that situation and move him off stage because the audience wanted to hear what I had to say. They're on your side as far as that goes. But if he starts poking holes in it, like I was talking about a minute ago, finding those little things and just ratcheting them up the ladder, that's when you get into trouble. And speaking of that ladder, there's something I call the argument ladder. And it starts out where you're basically on the bottom rung there's just a little bit of confusion. Maybe he doesn't agree with you. And granted, he, he amplified it quite a bit with the way he approached me. Pretty soon, it gets louder and noisier and more ridiculous. We've all had arguments like that where you don't even remember what you were fighting about in the first place because they get so far blown out. You start having grudges. You start calling names. And you start bringing up things from the past. That's what I didn't want this to turn into. So you want to make sure that if somebody's going to criticize you, especially in public, that you don't get into that situation. And you do that with the first couple of things that I talked about. One, you don't deny what's happening. And two, you acknowledge the person, let him know he's been heard. So my presentation in Atlanta ended. The guy walks up to me. We had a conversation and it turned out we weren't that far apart. As I thought, he was frustrated. I acknowledged that frustration, told him what I would do in that kind of situation, and we walked away okay with each other. Now, we weren't going out to eat afterwards, have drinks. We weren't hanging out. But he certainly was not as agitated as he was initially when he told me that I didn't know what I was talking about. You've got questions. You've got comments. Reach out to me. Redpodcast.com is the website for quickest response. Get me via Twitter, at David Hooper is my username. And if you're interested in getting on the phone with me one-on-one, it won't cost you a thing. We can talk about your business, your specific situation, and growing your influence. Join Red Insiders. Redpodcast.com has more information on that. It's in the right-hand column. Sign up. I'll send you information on our next call. Thank you so much for listening to Red Podcast. I've got more episodes coming up soon on the next episode, 174. I almost got arrested doing this. I'll tell you that story and more. That's next on Red Podcast. Subscribe to make sure that you don't miss it. Go to redpodcast.com to do that. Thanks for listening. I'll see you then. You've been listening to Red Podcast, real entrepreneur development. Subscribe today using iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS at redpodcast.com.